Welcome back to the Charismatic Voice, where I have heard and analyzed one song by Van Halen so far. That song featured Diamond Dave, and just afterwards, a whole bunch of you very vocally told me that I need to hear Van Halen's other lead singer, Sammy Hagar. I love this. I love getting to discover and pursue bands and their history through your recommendations. It is so much fun. So let's get to it. I just, I have to pause right away and say, as somebody who's only heard one other Van Halen song, which was Hot for Teacher, <laughs> this feels like it's a different band entirely. It feels very serious, epic, momentous. And Hot for Teacher was just like wild fun. So uh, I'm gonna go back to the beginning one more time and just try and fit this into my understanding of what Van Halen is. Whoa. <laughs> it's a cool pattern on the piano. Now this chord progression, I like the harmonic progression, it feels like uh, inspirational part of a movie. Ooh, okay, this now feels like a little bit more like the energy that we had in Hot for Teacher, but Again, feels like a much more serious subject. Um, that's just gonna be because of keys and, and whatnot. Um, and I do know that this has been placed in a few different films. So I, I think I probably heard it, I think it was in V for Vendetta, which I watched a very long time ago. I don't know if it was really obviously placed or, or whatnot, um, but uh, I don't know, it was Van Halen for sure when I heard it. Uh, I'm gonna go back a little bit to that, that big transition. Man, it's so wild how different this is. I love the space. <laughs> when I say the space, I'm talking about the way that the piano now, there's not as much pedal down, so there's a lot more um, quietness between notes. And in the drum kit as well, it feels like there's a really nice reverb. Uh, I am comparing, by the way, studio version to studio version. I, I think that helps essentially level the playing field and give me two different senses of Van Halen that are still within what their ideal version of a song would be. And there are moments in this where they actually take both drums and piano out for a moment and give us some silence. So there's space in the music. Whoa. And the way that they brought instruments in but took them away, again, lots of space. Okay, immediately, Sammy Hagar has a, a little more richness and darkness 
to the tone overall. And at the same time, I hear a lot of punch and drive still, which is really going to match with Diamond Dave's style. But it feels like there's just something a little heftier in Sammy Hager's voice. I'm gonna go back. Don't wanna wait till tomorrow. Why put it off another day? One by one, no problem. Build up and stand in our way. Oh. One step ahead, one step behind it. Now you gotta run to get even. There is something really delightful in there that suddenly reminded me of Dio, who, if you guys have watched me on this channel very much, you know that I love Dio. I feel like that was the singer that made my mind go, this whole rock and roll into metal thing. Like that's, holy crap, there are incredible, incredible singers. Dio is just the epitome of uh, heavy singers, in my opinion. He's incredible. Um, and, I heard some really, really interesting uh, sort of stylization that reminded me of him. I'm gonna go back a little bit. There, on a run. There's a way that he leans into that, like slides up and then off of it. That's so, Dio is just so giving in his vocal delivery. And what Sammy Hagar here did, it just sounded like it was coming up from inside and pouring out to an audience and then just trickled down afterwards. I, I really, really, I feel like that's one of the classic Dio singing mannerisms. And I heard it right here. That's really cool. And that actually makes sense too, because again, Sammy Hagar has a little more heft in the voice. There's just um, a little more overall body in the sound. And uh, Dio's voice definitely had that as well. And so there's sort of a different way that you might use that voice to navigate different things. And this sort of mannerism is something that I would be more likely to see in a, a voice that's just a little more chonky, right? <laughs> Let's go back. It just sounds like his voice is super connected as well. It, it sounds like he's got really good uh, breathing that is low. It sounds like all of the sound is originating from his core, even though, you know, the sound is really truly originating from your vocal folds, right? They are in here, they go wacka, 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 and that's what creates a pitch that goes wacka, wacka, wacka 440 times per second. That's a concert A, which is the note that orchestras tune on. So his voice, his sound is originating here. But when we talk about a connection that is low, we're talking about this feeling of the vocal folds being attached to what breath support is doing. And it actually, it almost feels like a string is between them sometimes. Those, uh, there's a breath pressure that builds up underneath and we can sense that. And we can sense how our rib cage, how our diaphragm, how even your pelvic floor muscles are affecting that breath pressure. And all of that adds up to breath support. And so it sounds to me like he has this incredible core to his sound, partly because I can hear that the breath flow that's coming up to hit his vocal folds is just really attached to a lower support system. I'm gonna go back again. Oh, let's go back a lot more. I really, I'm enjoying his voice quite a bit. Thank you guys.
Okay, so I'm also thinking about how do you choose a singer to follow somebody like Diamond Dave, right? There's, he had so much fun, so much drive in his voice. Um, there is, yeah, there's sort of a recklessness to it as well, which is really, really cool. And I feel that Sammy Hagar's top feels a lot more uh, like Diamond Dave's top. There's a, a lot of similarity in that area and just a certain rasp in the tone. Uh, and again, that ever-present drive that's like going the whole time, which helps you continue to hear his voice over all of the instruments. Side note, when they switch to right now, I love the way we suddenly got this major chord progression underneath. It feels like it was kind of dark and then it was mega inspirational. Like, could I play this at some sort of inspirational corporate event? Maybe, maybe, right? I, I like it. I dig it. I love that part. That's the part that made me think, oh yeah, I see the simil similarity and why this sound for both vocalists is just a great sound for Van Halen. <laughs> yeah, it's a, I don't know, it's, it's very peppy somehow while being heavy at the same time in this part. I think we're going back into some minor there. I, I just got to say, I totally vibe with this message. This idea of going and doing something right now, of making your impact right now. I, I also, I feel like, honestly, that's a large part of the success that I've had in life. I have a lot more success when I say, I'm just going to do something. I'm going to make it happen. I'm going to get it done right now. I'm not going to try to make it 100% perfect, I'm gonna go get that thing done. Or some people wait for the perfect moment to say something to somebody that they've been really concerned about. Nah, just do it right now. It, there's no time like the present to get something done to make that move that you've been wondering about. So I, I love the message. <laughs> I love it. Okay, back a little bit and then we'll keep going. I like that too. Just like, I want to go back to that again. I also love the little interjections from him. That was really fun. It's fascinating hearing what I considered a, a really full-throated, like meaning there's a lot of openness here. And again, uh, has a lot of core in the sound. I feel like we have a lot of access to that lower breath support. And we have all of those things sort of almost classically prepared through here. And then we've got this mega, uh, like, just forward focus of the resonance and then a little bit of edginess too. Just, I would say like those, the major forward fo focus and the edginess to the phonation, uh, those are the things that make it a rock sound. It's, it's a fascinating combo of, of sound creation and sound shaping and I, I love it. <laughs> Only
realize this this almost feels cheesy how inspirational it is. Right? It's like it's a little bit dramatic in the inspiration. And it's so different in message from Hot for Teacher. And I wonder if that has to do with the two singers and how they influence the songwriting. I have no idea, right? Definitely let me know about that in the live premiere in chat or just let me know about that in the comments on YouTube because I'm I'm wondering how we got such different songs from the same band with just a lead swing a lead singer swapped out. That's uh how did that happen? There's, I think, who we're going into some sort of interesting bridge, I think, I think, we'll see in just a moment. I hear uh, that sort of fervor, fervorant, full of fervor delivery from him that is also very reminiscent of Meatloaf. There's, uh, there's just, again, and that gets into that dramatic edge. And guys, I also really love dramatic singing and sometimes cheesy singing because, hey, I come from opera. <laughs> If you want drama, opera is going to be your absolute best genre for singing. So uh, <laughs> I totally dig this lightly over the top feeling that I'm getting. And I think that that would make me bounce in my car and have a better day. like a church bell in there. Okay, I think that piano pattern is the same or is related to the one we heard at the very beginning. Definitely had that church bell and anytime you have some sort of, it's like a tubular bell, I think is what was used there. It, it gives a certain seriousness to the situation right away, right? Uh, that it feels like it has a darkness to the overall tone. And then, of course, I think we went back into some minor. So it's it, overall, we've got gloom and inspiration at the same time. It means everything. I really like the complexity of that pattern. Oh gosh, that is satisfying. This is this is the reason that I wanted to get into Van Halen was because I was told the great guitar stuff. But also, I remember I keep thinking back to when I thought Van Halen was also lead singer and how blown away I was to learn that that was uh, the Diamond Dave was the lead singer in the first place and not Van Halen. Anyhow, uh, that guitar solo had so many cool aspects to it. Like there's just. Uh, there's some really fun pitch bending, pitch choices for sure. I'm going to go back and listen to it again. Yeah. That. Oh, that's so cool. Are those, do they call those harmonics when playing on a guitar? I don't know. Uh, really, really cool high sounds first coming, uh, leading us into it. Also, crazy pitch choices. Like, what's that? What's that little extra slide in there? Though? That! Oh, that's so cool! Like, what, a, what a sort of... I don't... 
I don't think there's any world where I would have thought like, I'm playing this cool melody and I'm gonna just pop in this extra like little, like little glimmer sparkle on top of the slide that happens in the middle of that. <laughs> and the way he played with that pitch on top and like reached up to it and then just barely hung up before going to the next part, that's all. Awesome. <laughs> and the pitch bends in there. They, there's like a little inner cringe and uh, glorious delight that I feel at the same time. Cause pitch bends, like there's something about my pitch training that makes me cringe away from them. Cause I'm like, oh, it's not on pitch, but it's bending of course. And so now when I, I have that moment of, oh, it's not on pitch, I feel delighted that somebody can create such a strong emotion in me from just a pitch bend. <laughs> <laughs> I love that fine line. Oh. I just gotta say, I love his vowel formation on top, the way everything all of those vowels were beautifully clear, but I would guess that they're slightly modified because it's so high and sustained with so much power. I I think it's just a perfect tiny bit of modification to still have the words be super clear and the tone miraculous. The way, the way he goes into that O, oh, you can hear that really, really low support and attachment. Oh. Right, when you hear that, that uh, somebody start to sound like that where it feels a little primal, where there's almost like a, a tiny bit of uh, a groan almost to the, the start of the sound, that's a good sign that they're attaching to their lower support really well. <laughs> That one was also, that one was also super fantastic and controlled really well. Wow. He's got good technique. What are you waiting for? What are you waiting for? Oh, I thought that was, I thought what are you waiting for was gonna be our last line in there. Oh no, we've still got some time. This is a long fade. Is that drumming going into it another song there? Cause that, I, I'm gonna go back just a little bit and see where it goes until the very end of this YouTube video. Cause normally I don't hear drums coming in at the end of a song like that, that puts more energy into it. Maybe they're saying to turn this thing around and go back and listen to it from the beginning again. I could go back. I'll let you guys do that. Go back to the very beginning after we finish the analysis. Let's let it keep going for now. Right? I feel like that must be leading into something else. Well, it out. Okay. That was both expected and unexpected. I knew that for y'all to recommend Sammy Hagar so much, it was going to be a very impressive voice. I really, really love the combination that I hear of so many great singers yet in his own unique signature sound. 
And uh, very unexpected because I just did not expect such a serious song. It is powerful, it is inspirational, and it is so different from Hot for Teacher. So I have no idea where this is going to go next. If you guys wanna make a suggestion for what song you wanna see me react to and analyze next on the channel, you can leave that in the comments below this video. You can also say hi to me in live premiere, but it's going so fast, I don't always see all of your recommendations. So put it in the comments below the video, that's the best way for it to be seen. You can also join our Patreon where we have a monthly vote as well. And sometimes I do other ones that I see patrons recommending. So anyhow, if you wanna go back to that original Hot for Teacher recommendation analysis and see the massive difference, you can check that out over here. May you fall more in love with music every day.